Robin Hood episode four, the one where the director said this about us. Um, Despera. They laugh at every line. They laugh at everything. They laugh and you look goofy because you know it's fake. It looks fake. You're being fake. Because apparently this isn't funny. I heard you come in late last night, fill up the condom jar if you need a re-up. <laughs> I have to say though, in this clip, I didn't do any of the editing. You look goofy. You look stupid. Every line. Mm. I need to know a lot about looking goofy after this clip. Think about your groin area. Think about the bones, flesh, the skin, the organs and muscles. Yeah, that was actually done as part of a guided meditation from him being on stage. You know, the meditation which is supposed to stop gun violence. Meditation is how we can reduce the violence, reduce the aggression, heal from the trauma. Although I have to say I have my doubts. If you could bring about world peace from men thinking about their knobs, it would have happened by now. We start with Richard Branson putting on a great spread and Eastlink once again bragging that they've cancelled all of these shows so you should come back and subscribe he's talking to someone who i'm assumes on tv or something he's got to sell his idea but no one's getting behind the idea that we should actually bring people who work into sherwood for once improve the area and make it not a crap all people don't support that for some reason blame the audience john the peasants here bill 121 the peasants says the peasant especially as it's canada part of the commonwealth you still have the king if you're not nobility you're a Peasant like the rest of us. You're just a wealthier peasant. Huh? Property deal, Sherwood. Who cares? They don't think we can tear down that massive pile of crap and put something nice in it. I'm not talking about Robin. Probably make my own rap video and put that out. It's probably be better than anything they've done, to be fair. At least he'd be able to use his own cars. Masked robbers who rap about their crimes. It's just a really stupid stupid thing to do. Look, we're documenting our crimes with video evidence outside our own house. It's just sexy. Which one? There's nothing sexier than luxury, my friend. I don't know about that, mate. Could I introduce you to Kate Beckinsale in Underworld? But then his son walks in, the uncouth louse. Well, all right, mate, how you doing? Oh, can eat all pig? I'm starving, mate. Like, he's clearly annoyed by his behavior, but refuses to do anything about it that would actually help the situation. Although, maybe I spoke too soon. When this guy is on his phone at the dinner table, he walks over. Why don't you make yourself useful and prove that all that education wasn't a complete waste? No, it was a complete waste. I mean, what did you expect it to be? He goes to university and gets taught about how your wealth is evil. I don't know, it just seems a bit counterproductive. Go play us something. What's he gonna play? I'm pretty sure the only instrument he's proficient with would be played via a motorboat. But he walks over to a grand piano and you're like, there's no way, there's no way. There's a reason why the camera angle is from this direction. This guy would think Tchaikovsky was a brand of whiskey. <laughs> I mean, at least it's not chopsticks. <laughs> so they didn't just make like one or two songs this. There seems to be a new song per episode. We're gonna get an entire album at the end of this thing? I mean, there's eight episodes, they could release an album. What, we're now rapping over broken drones? The cops did a whole thing about how expensive the drones are, and yet when five of them crashed to the ground two inches away from the boss, there's left them on the floor to be wrapped over. But y'all making all them little threats. You're not getting threatened when a cop tells you they're going to enforce the law. Like, you know they're going to do that when you do the action. Do it, show you something that you won't forget. There's no way I'm gonna forget this. We're just gonna show on a wall, spray painted, the location of our own house. Well, we could over to the police who are watching the music Music video. Catchy. I'm a Wu Tang gal myself. Definitely what I would have expected. When I look at you, I think, yeah, she's just got that 24 7 on the background on repeat. Whereas the sheriff, she's definitely more into Ice Cube. We are really pushing the boundaries of my knowledge here. <laughs> That's basically me done. In two weeks, your department has shot a civilian. Yeah, that was pretty stupid. Although not as stupid as saying she was a flight risk. I mean, come on, there are limits. Terrorized an entire neighborhood. Went into a tower block to arrest all of the rampant criminals inside it. That's not terrorizing, that's enforcing the law. They actually had a lineup of criminals that they'd caught. Crime in New Nottingham is down, arrests are up. Tends to be how it works. Funny how that always happens when your funding is under review. I mean, it's a pretty good reason to increase funding. I arrest loads of criminals. Crime's gone down because they're all arrested. Give me more money, seems like a good argument. That video cost a few hundred thousand taxpayer dollars and then- What? Oh, I was gonna say, because that video cost about two pound fifty. At least in universe, they went to have filmed it on a phone and leaned against a wall. Then the next one cost your job. If somebody releases a rap video, you lose your job. Sounds like an employment tribunal waiting to happen. Did they deliberately pause that on talk to the hand because the face ain't listening? I don't know why you're doing this. 
miss. You're making her seem really sympathetic. She's literally getting attacked by her boss because she's failing to catch criminals. And she's like, okay, I'm definitely going to support the person who's catching criminals then to save their own job rather than the people whose only plan in life is... We be robbing, robbing, robbing. Yeah, I'm definitely not supporting you. No matter how many bouncy castles you buy with somebody else's money. Bouncy castle? Sure, what is the root of the problem? It's like hunting rats in a dump. That's the second time they've said that in this series. It's perfect. It's occupied. So is a dumpster if you count the rats. The economy. Well, the sheriff's like, what we need to do is get them to turn over Robin himself. Make them realize that supporting criminals is bad for their health. Yes, and the state of their society and the quality of their building and their life. These people are dragging down the entire area. Arrest them. It's pretty good advice. But he's like, look, don't you have any powerful friends that can squeeze them in ways they won't see coming? Are we trying to be intimidating here or give them a massage? I I'm not really sure. Squeeze them. It's cute. Yeah, I mean, you're the sheriff. Just arrest them for breaking the law. Like, what is the problem here? Have you not seen how they live? We've already called them rats, and they keep chickens in a tower block. At this point, I think we've got the message. It says, I used to live in a place like this, and they tore it down, and I went to an orphanage. You crawled out of a gutter. Does that disgust you? No, because you crawled out of the gutter. Staying in a gutter, knowing it's a gutter, it's what disgusts people. Especially if you want to drag other people down, so they're forced to stay with you. Like the mom. <laughs> Maybe I could finally get my own place. Sherwood is more than just a neighborhood. Oh. We've got roots here. Here. Families we've grown up with. But she says, no, I remember at the orphanage. We used to have meatloaf five times a day. Prison surplus. There was this girl, Rebecca, big boned. We're still trying to be PC, are we? She's a sheriff. I don't think she'd care about offending her. Twice my size. And she couldn't get enough of that slop. Well, yeah, I mean, that tends to be a bit of a requirement, love. She tells a story. She couldn't get enough of that slop, so she took all my meatloaf. Yeah, I was living on scraps. Thought I might starve. These are supposed to be the villains. What are we doing? I was mistreated as a child, surrounded by people who kept breaking the rules, and so now I've become a sheriff who enforces the law to make sure that other people don't have to suffer like I did. This is the origin story of a hero. But then the damnedest thing happened. Rebecca got sick. Fainting spells. Maybe I spoke too soon. It's not the first time this series has done it though, is it? They've given them the origin story of a hero, presented them as essentially a good guy, and gone, by the way, they just do this really brutal thing for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> you can't like them anymore. She had fainting spells, seizures, no one could figure it out. It's like, yeah, what did you put in there, love? The girls thought God was punishing her wickedness. Well, someone was. I'm saying you can't taste rat poison in gravy. We had to spell it out for the mouth breathers at the back. The entire audience realized what was going on. You could have just left it as an insinuation. Rather than have the sheriff admit to a crime in front of somebody who would be willing to blackmail her over it. I'm saying you can't taste- Yeah, but it would show up in a toxicology report during the autopsy. <laughs> the morgue isn't gonna go, oh, I guess God did it. That's not how that works. But she starts giving him ideas. He want blackouts, water shortages, clothes shops. I'm surprised that isn't happening already, to be honest. This place is a dump. You're not telling me it's got a thriving economy. They can't have closed stores because everyone in the tower block could just nick everything from them. They'd go bankrupt within the week. Make sure would the shame of New Nottingham. Too late for that, love. It's already happened. Even Robin was talking about how much of a crap hole it was in the first episode. That's why she wanted to escape. The city will beg me to take it off their hands. I'm surprised they haven't already. Most of that was true in the first place. The hood will be high and dry. That's definitely true in the first place. They're all off their faces. So then she comes up with the most stupid statement she possibly could have said. Control the narrative. Make them the bad guys. The hood are the bad guys. They go around committing random acts of violence, thievery, and crime. The definition of the bad guys. What's he done except buy some coins and defend his own house from violent thugs trying to steal his own property and buy a children's ward on a hospital. We cut over to her mom. Don't worry, she's still not in a private jet out of the country quite yet. When did that drop? Looks lit. Don't you mean sounds lit? It's a song. Hmm. But it's like, look, I just want to get back out there and start campaigning to save Sherwood from being purchased by somebody who will make it nice. Gangsters at the door, cops harassing my friends. Yeah. Those nasty sheriffs harassing criminals. <laughs> Not an argument that you're gonna win. <laughs> of course, Robin's like, yeah, the no, huddle's gonna sort him out. They ran the sheriff off. Yeah, that was a stupid storyline, wasn't it? That never happened. They took care of Guy Gisborne, shot him with a bow and arrow. You know what I like most about the hood? Their humility. Okay. Actually like the mom for this one. Let's not try and respect people who are so stupid that they announce their crimes to the public. They make music. They film their own prosecution evidence. And now the sheriff has every excuse to crack down. 
mean excuse? You're committing crime. It's not an excuse. It's a just cause. Not like she needed a reason before. Of course she needed a reason before. You're the reason. Cut over to Robin filling her mum's prescription at the pharmacy. Last week, 30 bucks for my heart medication. Now, 150. I'm really confused. I thought this was in Canada. I thought your rules were similar to ours, but we'll see. Security surcharge in effect due to criminal activity. I could understand if Walmart and Costco just increased the prices in their local stores, you know, to account for all of the, um, as Robin would term it, liberation of products. And even when faced with this and the consequences of her actions, at no point will Robin think, I should probably stop committing crime. Her solution to this will be more crime. Oh, look, crime is affecting everyone around me. Better do more crime. She goes back home, though, collects the gang together and meets up with the person who's definitely going to become the rocketeer. But the CEO's on the TV. Look, I had to increase the prices. This security is expensive. My drive is like family to me. And they're getting assaulted by these rampant, violent criminals. People are afraid, man. So they should be. I mean, sing the safety of your building to Robin. I'd be petrified as well. The hood stole cars, destroyed police equipment. They did do all of those things. But won't your increased surcharges affect innocent people? It sure will. Yeah, but he doesn't have a choice. You increase the cost of doing business in an area, cost of business in that area increases. You can increase the price at a store to account for crime within that area. That's perfectly reasonable. Is that, look, it's either that or I just can't keep selling them. Forest community will not be safe until someone turns these outlaws in. Based economy. I said before that some of the things in the show are just so absurd, they're actually funny, but nothing has been as absurd as the news media actually being right for once. I'm hard pressed to disagree, Mr. Quayle. I mean, my name's not Mr. Quayle, but I'm glad you agree. Do we should occupy the pharmacy. Oh, piss off. What's our solution? I don't know. Let's trespass and steal. How about you stop damaging the local area and then people will stop having to pay for it. Her mom, though, straight back at it. She says, we don't need the hood gang. I mean, the clue they're not needed is in the word Gang. Because what this place needs is leadership, not a load of thieves going around dragging down the area. You sure you're up to this? You need rest. She's broke her back and is paralyzed from the waist down. She's not going to get cured with a good night's sleep. You're here. I was just telling everyone we should start by occupying the pharmacy. I love how proud you are of that. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I was just telling everyone that I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I was broadcasting that nobody should trust my opinion on literally anything ever again. That'd be my face. What on earth do you think you're doing, love? Why are we dead? around the truth here. We know who's responsible. It's the hood. What's he gonna do next? Pick up a stick and start teaching him a lesson himself. Joy riding in John Prince's car? What a shit shit. Oh no, I can't believe it. They're not to blame despite the fact that they're the only reason the price is increased. Trashing those drones? Fighting with Guy Giesborn? They've done all of these things and their actions have consequences. They ought to turn themselves in. True. I've been saying that for weeks. This is Thanasia's doing, not those kids. No, it's those kids. The price increases are done as a response to their criminal criminal activity increasing the costs. Maybe they need to think of a song first. Or maybe they get dragged through the street as people cry shame and then they get arrested. I don't like the hood either, but they're still Sherwooders. We do not sell out our own people. Okay, but what if they're rampant criminals, which are the cause of all your problems and actively destroying your society and culture? I mean, that is the most stupid thing I've ever heard in my life. Don't punish them though, no. Let them just destroy everybody else's life. At this point, you deserve to live in a crap hole. You're causing it yourself. Three days. My heart pills run out. Yeah, but we don't care about you, mate. You know, we don't have any sympathy for you. You're not a criminal. Have you considered breaking into the mum's house and stealing everything they've got? Because she'd probably want to help you then. Okay, we'll figure something out. I already have. As she's trying to come up with a response to the guy's reasonable request, she collapses. I mean, we get this. Then we'll... Tressie! Mom? Which you think would be obvious to everybody, just for the mouth breathers at the back. Okay, she's passing out. Thank God you had that medical training in the army, mate. No one would have grasped that fact otherwise. We'd really be in in trouble. Take the mum back to her bed and they get little John to uh, put her in it. You know, it's only Robin's mum in Robin's house. And Robin can't be bothered to do even this little amount of work. That's why she's so endearing as a character. She's resting. <laughs> Mate, you are just a font of information, aren't you? What could possibly have given you that idea? I looked at her scripts. Antibiotics, antidepressants. Why? She only lost the ability to walk a few days ago. She can't be depressed already. We gotta fix this. Have you considered stop being thieves and hand yourself in so you can face justice? Just an idea. Oh, we're so sorry. We'll do anything to fix it. Except the one thing that should have been done to us in episode one. <laughs> Prison. Got over to the pharma company where this guy is having blood transfusions from an Olympian. Do you want to maybe grab some OJ or... Chet. Okay, Chet. 
I mean, hey, at least he's a consistent character. And he's not committed any crimes. At this point, he's probably the most moral person out of everybody. How is Sherwood taking to the price changes? We're cutting off their medicine. How do you think they're taking it? It says it's okay. The press is on our side. What we need to do is think about what we're going to do next. Listen up, Chet. This is what ambition sounds like. You two want to make it out? Leave you alone. There's absolutely no way he'd leave them alone. You could get the hunchback of Notre Dame to walk into this place. He'd be like, oh, like the size of your humps. You're really curvaceous. Always amazes me what the peasantry will do for mere money. You're a peasant. If you're not nobility, you're a peasant. And I highly doubt you've got a knighthood. We find out, though, they're conducting trials, giving them hallucinogens to find out which one's the best. Well, those are some sad-looking lab rats. To be fair, they were a lot more miserable when they had to live in Sherwood Tower. And besides, that just looks like a normal street in California. Actually, no, sorry, I take that back. I mean, it's far too clean to be California. But they have absolutely nailed this guy's character when he does this. Jesus could just walk next to that big gap in the window or stand on this very expensive sofa because I'm a completely uncouth lout. At this point, just make him part of the experimentation. You know he's gonna do it anyway. In fact, it's probably the result of that why he's standing on a sofa. But we cut over to these. He's like, 22, that's the reaction we're looking for. We don't know which one's 22. Does it really help? Is it the person doing the abacus in the air or the one standing there doing absolutely nothing? Who knows? Maybe she's trying to cure world peace through meditating. Think about your groin area. Think about the bones, flesh, the skin, the organs and muscles. It's a piss easy job and she's decided to do it. A little music, this could be a banger. It'll just beam S Club 7 through the speakers. I'm sure they'll feel right at home. We've modified the secretions of Sonoran Desert Toads. I don't know why you bothered, mate. Have you seen Sherwood Tower? Half of them would just lick the toad directly. You could tell them to shove the entire thing in their mouth to get double the effect. They wouldn't even hesitate. They'd modify their masks just to have a special toad pouch they could lick on the way there to commit crime. But he says licking the toads is 300% more powerful than normal hallucinogens. We're hoping to patent it as an antidepressant. I mean, that'd work. If I was upset and you told me the only cure was to lick a toad's backside, I'd be like, no thanks, I think I'm fine now. All of a sudden, it's like magic. Whereas in Sherwood's Tower, they're like, I've got to lick that. Give it here, mate. Don't have to tell me twice, was about to do it on a Saturday night anyway. Not one of these special toads, they were just gonna find a frog on the street. Is it a dick? No. Uh, yeah, but with a little more R&D. What are you gonna do? Put sugar in it? <laughs> We're just gonna add sugar and caffeine and make it like all other American food. Add a load of corn syrup to it, then upsell them a gym membership. I can't be the only person as well that thinks there's an irony of showing someone Robin Hood to make them upset, and then trying to invent new ways to make them happy again afterwards. I think I'm part of the upsell of this. If Director X comes out with a load of toads to lick, I think I'm the target demographic. Put me down for a million shares. I knew he'd be interested in it. With his son like his, he's definitely gonna be miserable. We've got some kinks to work on. I'm not surprised you deal with doctors in Canada. You can't be all there to do that job. Do you want a stair lift? No, best I can do is death. What a horrible institution. This is the one thing I could see actually being true in Canada. Delicious. Definitely put sugar in it then, didn't they? But as they leave the building, we come across Robin, who's working for once in her life. That's the second parcel she's delivered this entire series. So at least we know she's earned about $2. I wonder her family is struggling to pay the rent. We're just lucky she didn't nick this parcel like she did the first one. I gotta get this right. I put mom in this mess. Well, it's nice to know you've got self-awareness for the first time in the entire show. Yes, if you just left, the entire area would definitely improve. Not only would be the less crime, but degeneracy as well. This isn't your fault. It's exactly her fault. She's the one who committed the crime that caused the prices to go up and invaded the home and tried to murder the guy who's lit raising them. You've done right by your mom every step. You mean apart from the time when she stole a car in order to pay for her bail money? Apart from that, right? What if we are just causing trouble? You are just causing trouble. How can you not think you're causing trouble? Everyone keeps telling you you're causing trouble as you commit crime. People are gonna get hurt. People have got hurt. Last episode, you shot a guy with a bow and arrow. In the first episode, you were attacking people with swords and spears. At this point, we're just disappointed it isn't you. You can't make things worse by making things right. She's not making things right. She's actively making things worse. What do you even mean? It's not even true. Trust yourself. Don't don't trust yourself. You make the wrong decision 100% of the time. Whatever you want to do, do the opposite. Throw the jar out. But he's like, oh, I'm really attracted to easy people with no morals. <laughs> so he goes to ask her out. So I was meaning to ask you. Except he doesn't have any cojones. And so he didn't. This is clearly on Director X's mind because like, he's already mentioned this to us. If you ever had the guts to talk to a girl, you ever had that ability. Now he's put it in his TV series. I mean, how often do you think this happened? She's never met a bloke she said no to. Yeah? Of all the people to check it out, I mean, come on. Just bring up the jar, mate. We should work on your wrist locks. We should work on emptying that jar. Uh, they're sloppy. 
take us at least five decades, but we'll get there eventually. Okay. In come the remaining Stooges. They've got the floor plans of the warehouse. Shouldn't be a problem unless you plan on burning down the building. You're not going to do that. I mean, they probably will. Uh, even if it's not intentional, they'll just walk in and everything will go wrong like always. Day's still young. No, of course I'm not going to burn down a building and kill innocent people. I'm not a monster. She's like, who knows me? By the end of this series, she's just going to nuke Sherwood. <laughs> oh, well, couldn't make everything right. Might as well make everything better. <laughs> And they laugh as if, oh, it's a joke. But he knows the truth. That's the face of a man who's realized he's made a deal with Satan herself. Where are we at? The corner of Sherwood and Forest. Lived here her entire life, doesn't even know her address. It's like, okay, all we have to do is steal a truck, but we, we don't know what to fill it with. There's pallets all over the place, but we don't know what people need. Not gonna help Sherwood if you show up with a crate full of bag. I don't know about that, mate. Did you see the guy earlier? Now that is a guy who wouldn't mind a helping hand once in a while. And besides, he said this. 30 bucks for my heart medication. And the blue stuff was originally developed to treat high blood pressure and angina but during the trials they found out it had some uh, interesting side effects so you know even if that happened there's at least one guy who i think could be very happy with it and when he's happy she's happy and i'm sure robin would be able to handle the side effects some people might not mind dude ew gross if you think that's gross you should see robin's kitchen i'm actually surprised you haven't been introduced to it by now mind you you wouldn't actually have much use maybe you could use your engineering skills to make water bombs oh so he says the problem is the pallets are all pre-made as pallets tend to be. So to know what's on each pallet, we're gonna need to hack into their systems. The problem is the system is air-gapped, and so unless he's on site, he can't get in. I need to be on site, and this corporeal form is not getting past that secure. As opposed to your incorporeal form that you definitely have, right? There's definitely a guy that's been following the meditation routine. Think about your groin area, think about the bones. So she comes up with the idea of, well, he can't get through security, but we can. All we have to do is break in, stick a transmitter in there, and he can hack it from the outside. Robin finds the network junction and, and I slide in the back door. Hey, it wouldn't be the first time that's happened to Robin. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> they all know she's proficient in it as well. Like, oh, this area is far too remote for normal cell coverage. We'd need a transmitter that you couldn't get off the shelf. It's like, what? You think you can build a transmitter that is more powerful than anything else that exists in the world? If you can do that, why are you nicking things? Just invent it and sell it as a product. The best cell transmitter in the world would definitely sell. To make it happen. The savant can not only build jetpacks, but now she's an expert in mobile phone signals as well. We can do this. We have to. I don't even know what your plan is actually, because you're planning to steal loads of bottles. Okay, what happens next month when you run out? Are you gonna rob them again? This is the most short-sighted plan to stick a plaster over the massive gaping wound you've created in society. Like, don't worry, if I keep committing enough crime, we'll get through eventually. Over to the sheriff's department now for, um, this gets a bit weird. It starts with the taking off normal duty. You report directly to me. You do what I say when I say it, and there's no questions asked, which for the next bit, it's a bit problematic. Oh, there's a power imbalance. You go where I go, you do what I say. No questions, no complaints. That'll come back to bite her in the ass later. She's like, I own you. I got you off and now you're mine. Like, well, not unless you kept evidence that he'd done something wrong, which you didn't have because there was none. Blackmail doesn't really work if you don't actually have any evidence of it. You think you're tough, hard, a real man? Well, I mean, apart from the obvious where uh, he seems to be the same height as you. I, th I think if we compare him to somebody who's built like a drain pipe, then... Uh, Yes. You see, one of the wonders about being a real man is uh, it doesn't get defined by you. I mean, do you think a real type B would be a sheriff just asking? I mean, this entire room is like the personification of femininity, isn't it? But if you notice, it's the same as, oh, would you have the courage to ask someone? And now we've got, oh, you're a real man. All of these are just Director X's own comments, the insults that he uses to people, put in his own show. Real man, eh? You're a man, right? You man thing. Are these personal insecurities or do you just not think you need to be more creative than, I've got two insults, that'll do. But we both know that's a lie. Deep down. I like cretins. <laughs> You're not a real man, and that's what I'm after. This is weird. You just want to be led on a leash. What you need to do is just give up to somebody who actually couldn't be dominant over you if they tried. <laughs> I mean, okay. I don't think you're sending the message you're trying to, love. Down. Like I say, it's particularly problematic. I own you. Down. <laughs> I mean, this is a lawsuit waiting to happen, isn't it? Because so he surrenders because, as you know, when you've already been insulted about you're not a real man, what you should do is just start surrendering. That's <laughs> how so you prove you're a real man. We get under the price increase because I'm assuming they've predicted that the criminals won't stop being criminals and so their costs are going to rise even more. Big company skins the neighborhood and you gotta look like the bad guy. She doesn't look like the bad guy. She looks like somebody who's selling a product that has a price. The people who look like the bad guys are the ones committing all the 
crime and stealing from people. But he's like, look, I'm trying to crowdfund for the neighborhood, but to realize how much money we need to make, I need to know what you sell in a month. Panacea doesn't allow generics. Panacea doesn't have any choice, love. It's called the law. Now, I don't know the exact law in Canada, but if it's anything like us, you have an IP, and then after a few years, the IP runs out, and then generics can come around. You can't just go, oh, we're not going to allow them. They're not Disney. <laughs> You'll have to raise a fortune to afford all this. Just have a little bit of faith. Don't worry, love. Everything I own, I've just stolen from somebody else who earned it. Have a little faith. I've got zero morals. Over to Robin's mum now, who's trying to recover from a serious accident, and she's got to put up with invasions. What are you doing? Are you working? How dare you? We don't work in this house. You'll be giving the area a bad name if they find out you've been... Working. <laughs> Sit on the sofa, be a layabout and steal from people like the rest of us. Rest. Yeah, rest. Just leech off everyone else. You're not dragging down society. You're not one of us. Stop, okay? You're scaring me. You're scaring me? I've never seen anyone do work before. I thought we could just take everything off everybody else. I didn't know I'd have to be doing work. Oh. She's a great parent to have raised this one, isn't she? And if I stop, what if I never start again, huh? Did you ever start in the first place? I've never seen you do anything. You all seem to have infinite time to just sit around. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Jill Scarlet. Jill Scarlet? This man will be our hero. What's happening? Are you doing two remakes in the same series? I must be in a damn coma for you to be speaking to your mother like that. Oh, that's just what you wish you were. It's like, oh no, she's coming to my room again. Besides, she can't use her legs. It's not as if she's got a wasting disease where tiring her out is going to make her worse. You're a freight train, Mom. We can stop you if we tried. I'd love to see you give it a go, though. Don't worry, Robin. We got this. <laughs> it's not even a good analogy. Freight trains are incredibly easy to stop. You lift up a bit of track, they come off the rails. Get a load of junk and put it on the track, they'll come off the rails. But no, I still want to see you try. <laughs> Actually, no, I agree with the mother. You're a freight train, Mum. We couldn't stop you if you tried. Uh, you do realise I can't walk, right? I'm not actually going anywhere. I've already been stopped. Although it does make me more like a freight train because we're both on wheels now. You'd make a terrible nurse, you know that? It's true, but she'd make a terrible everything because she can't be bothered to go to work. Besides... You'd make a terrible nurse, you know that? This is Canada. A terrible nurse would be one who keeps people alive. <laughs> Can you stop saving them? You're costing us a fortune. <laughs> she only wanted a stair lift. That was the perfect excuse. I'll get some rest. I'm not being funny, but... You are in bed, right? You are resting right now. If you ever talk to me like that again, I'll defenestrate you. I know. Didn't realize it was that predictable. We jump over to the mechanics where they've got their criminal evidence just sitting right next to them at somebody else's place of business. We're making him an accessory again. <laughs> the hacker turns up though and he just basically starts insulting her work. You make sure to test the amperage. Lithium cells are better at Cause I'm- Yeah, use lithium cells, you know, otherwise known as a battery. Make a GUI out of C++. Pass the energy through the warp corner cells. Now, if you want me to take over, I can just stop this. You got a problem, Ty? I mean, I have a problem because I actually recorded this review yesterday and it didn't record my mic, so I know what's about to happen. And that's how I know what she's working on. More delicate than your usual creations. It's not delicate. Do you want to know why? It's a Raspberry Pi. She's not making some custom transmitter. She's just got a Raspberry Pi and stuck it in a case. That's like saying you're making a custom engine and then just pulling one out of a car. Mine now. You saying I ain't delicate? Yes. About as feminine as Bruce Forsyth. Nice to see you. To see you. Also, if you're trying to prove you're delicate, going, Are you saying I'm not delicate? It's not helping your case. Delicate would be feminine. It'd be coy and submissive. It'd also be fragile. Not somebody who invades somebody else's property, steals from them, and has a fight. I just thought you could use some help. Mentally. And it's like, look, I also, I hacked your school records, and you're an idiot. You're awful at everything. Which I find is general practice in life. Oh, you got a C at GCSE. <laughs> yeah, everybody cares about that. She's like, stay out of my personal life. You're saying I'm not delicate. Call me not delicate again. I'm not. Yeah. But she starts to spin a story about what happened in her high school. Oh, they wanted me to make a door hinge. But I decided to flex. Yeah, she went out, started to lift, and became a super... No, that wasn't what she flexed about. Teacher telling them I'm making a bomb. It's a weird flex, that one, innit? I kind of want to ask, what were you doing to your teacher in order to make them think that you were building a bomb? And what did you build that looked like a bomb in the first place? That was an amplifier. How do you make an amplifier look like a bomb? I mean, you're making a mobile phone transmitter look like a Raspberry Pi, so... So I know you're capable of it. What did you do with this one? Get a couple of bricks of Play-Doh, stick it to the amplifier and make it look like C4. I went to high school and my students were making plastic explosives. The thing is, it gets worse. Because no matter how stupid I thought her story was, I got expelled anyway. It reminded me of something. 
And I know where he got that from. So why would you make up something that sounds so nonsensical? And I'm like, oh no, it's another grift. It's all part of the social messaging, folks, because we are changing the world. One completely empty mind after another. Big bunch of groin area. Some of you may remember this. When back in 2015, a guy brought a homemade clock to school to impress the teachers and got arrested for it because they too thought it was a bomb. He went to school, he was so excited. Dreams of becoming an engineer. Show the teacher his digital clock he'd made from a pencil case. I showed it to impress my teacher, but she thought it was a threat. It was really sad that she took the wrong impression. So as anyone would do in this situation, when he was questioned by the sheriffs about it, he refused to tell them that it was a clock. And as the story went on, you found out he wanted to be in MIT. Had people say that he should get a scholarship because of it, and got to visit the White House because of it. And it's the same story that they're trying to spin in this, Ah, oh, I was just making something, and you assumed when you shouldn't because of who I am. And then you're like, all right, calm down. That looks a bit weird for a clock, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I can't understand why someone could possibly have got the wrong impression. And that's why despite a load of grifters calling it profiling and whatever, the lawsuits got repeatedly thrown out because you probably shouldn't bring things into school that look like that and start ticking. His English teacher saw it, warned him about its appearance, and then after it started to beep, confiscated it. <laughs> I'd be confiscating it and throwing it out the window alongside a pissing amplifier. Hey, but what I would suggest, if you're going to put stories like this into your show, at least choose one that's reasonable. <laughs> like, she's a criminal that goes around robbing places and attacking people with swords. The potential that she's planning violence on somebody is uh, pretty high at this point. Here. My Raspberry Pi. Now you can help save Sherwood from the comfort of my couch. Imagine if he'd just gone with them in the van and hacked it from there. They wouldn't have needed a custom transmitter at all. I, uh, overstepped. You didn't overstep at all. She's so bad at building electronics, they look like bombs. Think she's electrocuted herself as well. I was mistaken. Yeah, you were. Yeah, because this isn't a transmitter. It's actually a bomb disguised as a transmitter. What's good? Alice in Borderland. I mean, it's, it's not this show, I can tell you that much. I mean, I did a non-exhaustive list of things that were good off the top of my head yesterday. Not, not a single one made by Hollywood, and unfortunately didn't include you. Why are you banging elbows together, you creepy weirdos? Do you realize there's a lot of sensitive nerves in your elbow? Like your funny bone. You've got hands, mate. Use them for once. Use them for something other than crime. But the person who keeps putting bombs inside musical equipment is now working on the masks to make them able to breathe on the fire suppression system. Plug that in, and Tennessee will be mine to control. Now all we need is a ride. I mean, that's unusual, because normally you're the ride. What was that? You're having a seizure. Did you jump back in horror when you looked over and saw Robin in the same- ah! It's like a jump scare from Outlast. Quick run, she's got the jar with her. But the gang of complete geniuses decide they're gonna hide in the back of a van. So they all climb in the back and get transported to the warehouse and have made themselves almost invisible inside with their glowing masks. And that's why when the guy goes inside to start unloading the truck, you see their incredible hiding place. I don't know where they could possibly be in this van. That's why their entire plan hinges on luck. The fact that he just walked away and didn't look inside his own van. Very discreet, mate, very discreet. They start sneaking through the warehouse, dodging the tons of people walking around, and desperately hope nobody spots their glowing LED faces through the boxes. Because they're just looking through. All these people are like, why is that box over there glowing blue? Is that like a super strength one or something? Meanwhile, we've got Tuck trying to hack into the computer system through the power of meditation. Inspired to make a change, he founded Operation Prefrontal Cortex. Yeah, I really have no idea who this character is based off. He's the only person that can hack into a computer system and help towards world peace at the same time. You're in? Yeah. And then First time for everything. Normally people are in. He's like, how do I know what I'm looking for? He goes, look up. You see that really dangerous bundle of wires, which absolutely isn't up to building code? Yeah, we didn't put those there. Those are totally in every single IT firm. The best bit is they even have the false lowered ceiling. You know the ones. We just push a tile up so that you can easily run more cables over the top of it to hide it from view. But then as she's walking along the corridor, the security guard sees her through the door. We get this and I don't understand this. What was he doing? I'm gonna step to the left. I'm not sure whether I can can I see you. I mean you are you are glowing and as far as I know there's no security guards wearing glowing fox masks. I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna step back and forth and stare at you for a bit. And it only gets worse when he decides to chase her and we find out what his tactic is to get her to stop. Hey! 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 
Hey, stop! You filthy criminal! Stop! Hey! Always works. Like something out of Demolition Man. Thing is, as she's running from security, she comes across a new experiment. Meanwhile, at the sheriff's department, an alarm went off which triggered him to enter his boss's office. Didn't knock. Probably didn't expect her to be doing yoga in her own office, specifically downward dog. But you gotta be honest, her hair looks way better when it's down. Back to Robin now, and she's either in scrubs or getting ready for a football game. Security comes looking for her, and you can just see the utter disdain on this one. I can't believe you're going around this building keeping me safe. This patriarchal security guard's just keeping me safe from the world's dangers. Who do they think they are? Do they think there's violent criminals that would be walking around the building that could potentially murder me? Anyone come through here? Just you, perv. Yeah, just you. The person keeping us safe from the murderous lunatic right next to me. You can't be in here. I mean, yes, he can. He's a security guard. He can be wherever he pissing wants. I don't know if you've noticed, but his job more important than your job. So toddle along. But he gets intimidated by all the tiny little insignificant people. And then Robin either gives up smoking or licks one hell of a frog. I do like the sheer ego that this woman had on the security guard when her entire job is, I'm going to stick a blue patch on your arm. Yes, such a prestigious position has been bestowed upon you. What's this? You probably should have asked that before they put it on your arm, love. Now just relax and let the dermal patch take effect. I bet Fryer Tuck wishes he'd been the one entering the building now. <laughs> right up his street, licking a toad's arse. Robin, though, realises I need to get out of here. It's basically a normal Saturday night for us, so at least she has a huge amount of experience coping with it. To be honest, by this point, I'm surprised she hasn't built up an immunity. It's like if she keeps going with that jar, she might even evolve her own natural latex coating. Either way, she staggers along the corridor, the camera starts to go weird, we get chromatic aberration, and we're going out of focus, which, at least for this, we can say is deliberate. Meanwhile, Friar Tuck's still in her head going, Look up at all the wires! Because if someone's off the face, obviously you tell them to look at the pretty colours. Somehow, though, she manages to stagger along to some stairs. Looking for looking. And I can only assume she's auditioning to lead America. If she fell off a bicycle, it'd be 10 out of 10. These two starts panicking. I don't know whether they're okay in there. And then we get what seems like an advert from Big Nut. What are those? Almonds? Yeah. High protein. Gluten free. You can never escape Big Almond, can you? They're everywhere. It's like if someone's drinking milk and goes, hmm. Creamy and fatty. Drink milk today. Get your calcium, chaps. Do the creators just really like almonds or something? That was a weird scene. At that moment, though, the sheriffs arrive. Just as Robin arrives to place the transmitter. Also, while we're here, that also looks like a bomb. <laughs> It's not profiling, it's just what electronics look like when they're done like that. And the petty walls of man crumble before the power of the all. I bet everyone can't wait for him to get his wish where he enters a computer. That way he could just mute his audio source. The sheriff, though, enters the building. She puts men on every exit so no one can get in or out. Hey, do you need any guides? Because we know the place. We got it from yeah. here. Yeah, that's stupid, isn't it? Hey, so this is a massive building and we know the entire place inside and out. Just tell us where you want to go, we can take you there a minute. No, I've got this! I mean, I'm a ginger and I've no idea where this building goes. I'm just gonna walk around, get completely lost, and never find anyone. Don't worry, I got it from here. I don't need you and your dangly bits giving me good advice, thank you very much. Talk to the hand, because I'm too ignorant to listen. During all this, somehow, the correct pallet gets loaded onto the truck, and like, hang on. You're telling me there's a pallet just sitting in there that had the exact ratio of stuff that you needed? Seems like a bit of a coincidence, doesn't it? Who knows, maybe he set up a build order and they just built an entire pallet in three seconds. Although Robin takes that opportunity to return, and for once in her life, she's happy. Are you seeing these lights? They taste like stars. Makes about as much sense as normal as well. I can taste the sun! Who knew all it would take for her to be happy and not commit crime would be to lick a toad. The issue is, they get spotted by the sheriffs, so they trigger the fire suppression system and try to murder everybody by making them suffocate to death. <laughs> Yeah, these are the heroes. Oh no, we got caught by the people trying to stop us committing crime. Oh, well, I guess they're all dead now. Because <laughs> of course they can breathe in their masks. They don't care about killing the dozen or so people that are on the other side of the wall. Which is why I don't really have much sympathy when she starts to hallucinate. And obviously all she can imagine is her mum's kitchen. Because that's where the cookie jar is. So it's the first place her mind goes. There is no way she's living her life without that thing. Her mum's like, ah, oh, there's a storm coming. It's like, yeah, you're causing it, love. You're not ready. Not ready. Doesn't matter whether she's ready or not, she's still causing it all. If she stopped causing problems, there probably wouldn't be a storm. They'll take everything, Robin. Every last inch. I will take what? You don't have anything. All you do is drag other people down with your dead weight. Let that happen, I'll win. That's why you lose. Hopefully. I mean, I wanted her to be permanently put in prison three weeks ago. Stop it! No! Stop committing crimes! No! 
I can't stop. It's my only joy. So the security guards, you know, the ones that everyone looked down upon because they were men saving everybody's lives and sacrificing their own safety for other people, you know, also endangered themselves to try and save the sheriffs. <laughs> repaid with the respect that you would um, assume you'd get from this show. And so they walk off and presumably die in the Halon fire suppression system. The sheriffs start hunting Robin again. We know you're in here! I'm glad you told her that because I don't think they got it the first time when he went, Hey you! Stop! I'll make it work. For Ma, for Sherwood. Finally, she's had a realization about how the useless waste of space she truly is. It doesn't matter. If she gets caught here, the world will be a better place. They come up with a plan, though, to distract the sheriffs. As the sheriffs spot the masks moving. Oh. But this is a great example of just how bright those masks are. They can even be seen through smoke. We should probably remember this visibility power the next time they have them turned on in the dark when they're doing a stealth mission. Of course, it turns out they just took the mask off, put them on a pallet and moved it. Either way, they jump into the van, barely able to breathe, almost suffocating on the way. And drive past all of the sheriffs in their high-speed getaway vehicle. Suspects got away! I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, they played music over the top of it, but the guy is shouting, The suspects got away! It's like, no they didn't, they're right there! If anything, you should have been shouting, The suspects are getting away! Slowly! <laughs> Why don't we just get in our significantly faster cars and drive after them? But Robin collapses on him. She's like, oh, I've had a hard day's work, Robin, Robin, Robin. The only way you can recover now, Robin, is if you get the jar. So she makes a move on him because you know what he's like, he's not gonna do it himself, is he? Also, she's entirely off her face, which makes this a slightly dodgy scene. <laughs> but then we get one of the worst things that the crew had actually done when they go back to the shop and leave her the pallet of stolen goods outside her legitimate business. You can take it from here, legitimate businesswoman who's not a criminal. Now that, So now they've roped her into a criminal enterprise. You can take it inside and get caught because suddenly you've got a load of stuff on your books that didn't exist before. Or you could follow the plan she actually does, where she goes to Sherwood Tower with her backpack full of stolen merchandise. Mr. Franklin, how are you feeling? I got some stolen goods for you, Mr. Franklin. So now she's distributing prescription only. She is gone from legitimate entrepreneur to crime boss in like 30 seconds and it gets worse they went through all this effort because the prices increased so they asked her you know what do you sell in a month give us a ballpark and went and nicked it what happens at the end of next month when they run through all the stuff that she's given out to them these are consumable products i don't think you thought this one through did you really no charge compliments of the hood this isn't just free I'm gonna tell you it's stolen goods and I'm distributing it. So, you know, that's a few hundred people in the tower block. No, she's a criminal now as well. Even Robin Hood wasn't stupid enough to tell people in the tower she was the criminal. She's gonna get caught in like 24 hours. He's like, what a lunatic. I mean, it's not my normal thumbnail, but I think it works. Oh, there's the cookie jar we know and love. Then everyone in the tower is loved alongside us. That is a chunky beer moth, isn't it? I guess it's not that unusual. A lot of people have like a jar they put money in to save. She's just took it one step further and put her entire life savings into physical stock. Feeling better? Feeling better from what, love? She's permanently paralyzed. What were you expecting? Oh, I can walk now. I'm way better. I've been tap dancing in the kitchen earlier. But Robin's bragging. Oh yeah, I heard the hood came through today, made everything better. It's amazing, isn't it? We're all, we're all amazing. They cleaned up their own mess. They didn't even clean up their own mess. They gave you a temporary stopgap for a month. The best thing they did is delay the mess while making an even bigger mess. Then mom starts braiding as if she was always here when I needed her, you know. She really needed somebody because she was sitting in bed. I could have used you when I was sitting in bed as well. I can explain. We needed you. I mean, this is basically an abusive environment from what I can tell. All she's doing, she wouldn't allow her to move out. She's like, I can't believe you left the house. She's just using guilt tripping to control people. That both of those need to go with their dads. I tell you, this is horrific. And until I can work again? When did you work the first time? We never saw that. What job do you even do? The only thing we've ever seen you do is cause trouble for other people in the world. Which said, don't worry, I can work harder myself. What's a few more hours on the bike? Nice to see you do one hour on the bike. You've only delivered two parcels in the entire series. Maybe there's a new app I could work for? I don't know if your phone vibrating when you're about getting a new job was a hint or what. <laughs> but Tuck decided, you know, while we're already being criminals and dragging down all of society and ruining our own environment where we live, I decided to make it 
it even worse. So while he was in the system, he downloaded all of their files and then broadcast it to the world. So this guy's on the news and people found out that he was testing licking toads on people. And due to the press, all of his investors pull out, which is something Robbins had plenty of experience with. And of course, Richard Branson's pissed because he was one of those investors. No DNA, no prints. You can buy these anywhere. Yeah, but the question is, how was the no DNA or print? They just put them on with their hands, not their gloves. And how is there no DNA when you get a mask and then put it on your face? What were they doing before they put them on? Like exfoliating within an inch of their lives. And then just when you think they couldn't get any more stupid, they get worse. And we learned something. Whoever they are, the hood risked their lives for the health of their neighbor. Yeah, we learned something. They're loyal. They care about each other. <clears throat> I don't know how you could have just learned that considering you that's the first thing you said on the first time we met you in the first episode. She's a leader. She has influence, loyalty, with thick as thieves in Sherwood. Oh, it's okay though, because we learned something I already knew. Oh, this show. This group goes around destroying their entire area, drags down the lives of everyone they know, and then their own people go, yeah, but we can't hand them in. I know they're destroying everything about our entire town, but we can't make them face justice. Why? I'm loyal to the people who constantly drag down all of society. Oh, and at this point, the only saviors of the city are Richard Branson and the sheriff trying to improve the area, rejuvenate the city, and save everybody from the criminals, which are just dead weight dragging down everybody else. So as we go into the future, is that, oh, the sheriff's gonna take her gloves off. All I can think is good. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.